I'd like to take a moment to let you all know about a new nonprofit organization started by my brother Craig. It's called Treats and Truth. They fill oversized brown lunch bags with snack items, chips, crackers, popcorn, cookies, etc. Also, a bottle of water, toothbrush, toothpaste, sanitary wipes, and most importantly, a small gospel tract book of John. No cigar? Uh, I'll have to talk to him about that. The bags are then hand-delivered to the homeless and people in need in and around the Los Angeles area. Let's help get this ministry off the ground. They're a 501c3 tax-exempt organization, so any and all donations are tax-deductible and greatly appreciated. Visit their website at treatsandtruth.org. Check out the show notes for the link. Also, please follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Welcome to episode 164 of the Burning Bush Podcast, where we share the message of the Bible while enjoying a good cigar. Hope you're doing well, and I'm glad you joined me. Today we're reading the New Testament book of Luke, chapter 21, with commentary from the notes in the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, and I'm smoking the Crowned Heads La Vereda, number 54, 5 and 5 8 by 54. Now, Crowned Heads doesn't have these listed on their website, so let's go over to smokein.com where I pick these up and see what they have to say. Originally known for focusing on rock and country music themes, the Nashville-based Crowned Heads has since expanded to include a wider range of influence, most prominently stemming from Mexican, French, and Cuban cultures. The La Barrera cigar fits into the latter mold, partnering with legendary cigar maker Ernesto Perez Carrillo to craft the most premium cigar in Crowned Head's portfolio to date. The name, which translates to The Path, was inspired by a song called De Camino a la Vereda, which struck a chord with Crowned Head's, with the moral of the story being to stay on your path. Similar to certain modern-day Cubans, Cohiba Bejique comes to mind, Crowned Head's La Vereda features larger ring gauges throughout the line. This is contrary to the company's usual preferences, but Carrillo insisted that the cigar's recipe really opened up in thicker formats. Said recipe includes a four-year aged shade-grown wrapper from the Jalapa region of, of Nicaragua, a Jalapa binder, and fillers from Nicaragua and the Dominican Republic. All told, the Crowned Head's La Vereda boasts a medium to full intensity, being Cuban-esque yet fuller in body. The cigar lingers on the palate with nuanced complexities of peppered toast, cardamom, worn leather, and ginger snap cookies. And the Vitolas are the number 50, which is a 5.375 by 50, the number 52, six and a half by 52, the number 54, 5.875 by 54, and the number 56, 6.25 by 56. That is the La Vereda by Crowned Heads Cigars. So let's get back into this week's reading in the book of Luke, chapter 21. I'm reading from the English Standard Version, the ESV, and verse 1. Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box, and he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. And while some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, he said, As for these things that you see, 
The days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be, and what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and pestilences, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness." Settle it, therefore, in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, and let not those who are out in the country enter it. For these days are of vengeance, to fulfill all that is written. Alas for women who are pregnant, and for those who are nursing infants in those days, For there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in sun and moon and stars and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the seas and the waves people feigning with fear and with foreboding on of what is coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And Spurgeon comments on verse 28, But when these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is near. The destruction of Jerusalem was, so to speak, the rolling up of the curtain on the great drama of the world's doom. It will not fall again until all the things we now see will have passed away, and only the things that cannot be shaken, the things of God and of eternity, which we cannot see, will remain. We must regard the siege of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple as being a kind of rehearsal of what is yet to be. Then all external religion, if it is but external, will perish in the fire, and only the spiritual and the true shall live. And back to Luke verse 29. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. And Spurgeon says about verse 33, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Our Lord Jesus Christ spoke nothing but pure, unalloyed truth, the truth of God, and therefore it will stand fast forever. No power can effectually resist the words of Christ. Where the word of a king is, there is power, but where the word of God is, 
There is infinite power. What he says must be done. Before he said, let there be light, there was not a spark amid all earth's gloom that could help make the day. There was nothing lying here that could have created the light, and yet the darkness fled before that command of God. And so, today, if nothing on earth can help the fulfillment of Christ's word, he has said to this poor dark world, Let there be light. And that light he has kindled is growing brighter and brighter and will increase unto the perfect day. Christ's word must stand. And back to Luke, verse 34. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. And every day he was teaching in the temple, but at night he went out and lodged on the mount called Olivet. And early in the morning all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. That's the end of today's episode. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the Charles Spurgeon Study Bible, as well as today's cigar. Also, Groundworks Ministries for daily Bible studies and devotionals. Treats and Truth Ministry, where you can get involved in helping to spread the gospel to and be a blessing to the homeless. And the Burning Bush Merchandise Store, where you can pick up some items to help spread the word about the show. If you know anyone who needs to hear this, please let them know about the podcast and help share the message of the Bible, the hope we have in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. If you'd like to contact me, you can email me at steve at theburningbushpodcast.com, which is linked in the show notes as well. So until next time, have a great day, have a great cigar, and God bless.